Previously, we discussed the differences between errors and exceptions. PHP can do something pretty cool and convert its errors into exceptions. The benefit here is that sometimes an error is unavoidable. For example, if you try to read a file that cannot be read, it could throw an error. If you check to see if that file exists before you try to read it, then you can avoid that error. But in the milliseconds between checking to see if that file exists and actually trying to read that file, it could have been deleted. This is called a race condition, and they're no fun at all. Sometimes you need to try and do something and recover if it goes wrong. Converting errors to exceptions lets you do that. Let's take a look and see how we do that with a bit of code. Here we have a tiny snippet of code. On line four here, as we've seen in many other videos, we're turning our display errors on. You might not always have to do this yourself, but on workspaces we do. On line seven, we're trying to open a file called nope.txt, which in this example doesn't exist. The code tries to deal with the file maybe not existing on line 10 by checking to see if the handle variable is set to false. But at that point, PHP will already have thrown an error. Let's try this code out by clicking on the eye icon for a preview. So here we have a warning from the f open core function saying it's failed to open the stream. No such file or directory. Now this is annoying. It's displayed a error message even though we are trying to display our own error message. And that's what this is here. Normally it'd look a little bit prettier, but this is just an example. So, how do we convert errors to exceptions here in a way that can help us? Well, PHP has a function called setErrorHandler, which accepts an anonymous function as a callback. Every time a PHP error of any severity is about to be thrown, instead of doing what PHP normally does, it will run this callback. Let's have a look at how this callback works with a really simple error handler that throws an exception. If we go back to our workspaces here, and just make a little space, and throw the setErrorHandler in place. So. Here we have an anonymous function, and it accepts these four arguments. We have error no, which is a number relating to the type of error that's being thrown. We have error string here, which contains a human readable message, which will explain what the error is. We have error file here, and then at the end we have error line. All of these arguments are passed through, and as we should be familiar with, we are throwing a new error exception. This error exception is a core PHP exception type, and it's designed for exactly this sort of behavior. Then we simply pass on all the arguments in this specific order, and we should be good to go. Let's save this and see what happens when we run it. Oh no. That's quite hard to read. Let's view the page source. <laughs> so now we have a fatal error. That's a bit worse than a warning. So let's see what's going on. There's an uncaught exception of error message with the message and this is the same message we had before, right? This was the warning we had, but it's now been converted to a error exception. And we're not catching it. Let's go back to our code and see if we can work out a way to catch it. Now, when working with exceptions, you need to put anything contentious in a try block. And then the result needs to go in a catch block. Let's just get this comment out of the way, make life easier. So we want to catch an error exception. We want to assign it to an E variable. Whether we use this or not, we have to assign it to a variable. So now we are trying to read the file. This may throw an exception. And if it does, we're getting ready to catch it right here. Let's try this out and see if I got it right. Perfect. Now we have no warnings, no fatal errors, nothing weird on the screen. When fopen comes across a problem, it will throw an exception. And we know something went wrong and we can handle the error properly. We can do all of this without having to stoop to hiding errors in development, which is a huge pain and can really cause problems when you're trying to debug something. It might not always make sense to convert errors to exceptions. In a situation where you are building a component which could be installed on anyone's application, you might not be able to rely on them being converted. But in your own applications, you can absolutely do this, as you have total control. Exceptions can help you catch tricky stuff in development and help you work around some of those errors where PHP would rather keep on trucking than stop processing. Exceptions make PHP complain more noticeably and more conveniently, and that's usually a really helpful thing. 